All right, talking my face off here. Should we start every video with like a panic break and then floor it on the gas? That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, what's up, guys? This is the 2014 Chevrolet Captiva Sport. Uh, we are uh, doing a couple quick driving videos. You know, actually, that's not bad. I did, I did make some, some jabs about it being slow, and it, I think it is slower around corners somehow, or it feels it because of maybe torque steer um, or stability control intervention. But in that little straight ahead right there, um, going dead accurate, uh, it felt pretty good. You know, it's, it's definitely not a quick vehicle, but I would say like about 8.5. Which is respectable. I mean, considering the fact that the you know the, the Honda Insight that that hybrid that everyone hates um, does like zero to sixty in like twelve point five, and you know you have to like drive a Prius like a murderer in order to get it under ten seconds. I mean, that's pretty good. It's pretty good at this price point. Uh, so we wanted to keep talking about sort of like the downsides of this car. So one thing I'm noticing right away is the Chevrolet badge is not the new badge, which is kind of like a little bit unusual because, um, you know, they've been so, um, they've worked really hard on that new badge. I mean, I know it just looks like the same Chevy badge, but if they really, I promise you, they've worked hard on it. Ooh, there's So some weird torques here there. It just gets like weavy and it's not great but most people don't really drive like i do but um it's good to know you know if you it's just good to know i think it's uh, it's informative um so back to the badge you know it's still like the fat badge uh, i don't think that's the official term for like the pre 2012 or 2013 badge but um it's a lot fatter the new one is really really slim and um is not this one is barely three-dimensional i mean it's sort of i'm caressing it lovingly uh, but it's let's see what the horn's like i'll sleep it Sounds like a Dodge Stratus. Um, so like the, uh, this is the fat badge, which I definitely noticed outside as well. And um, get some lights. I need to work on my work on my lighting. I'm trying to improve production values across the floor. <laughs> and lighting definitely falls in that category. Although I am not picking my nose as much as um, certain passengers of mine uh, that have been on video lately, um, which is good. This is like Mariah Carey's airport over here. Uh, on the left. Uh, so, so it has the fat badge, which is weird because for continuity, most brands would like, that would be like a really big priority. And it shows you that this car like really is on the back burner. And that, you know, but for fleet customers, who cares? If that means that you can get, if you could get two Captiva Sports for the price of one Equinox, you know, that, that might be, it might not be a bad trade off. Particularly because for the vast majority of people who aren't real like car people, this just feels like a brand new car. And um, for most people, like the when they think of how much cars cost, they'll think like, oh, like I could get, you know, you see all the ads for like whatever for, you know, 10 grand for a new compact um, when it's like heavily discounted. But most people generally think of like SUVs as like starting at like 20 or 25,000. So whether that's accurate or not, you know, in 2014, eh, I mean, eh. but I mean, when your friends get in, they're not, they, there's more room, there's more ground clearance for bad weather. Um, there's that folding back seat. I mean, it's, there, are, there are serious benefits to having a small crossover. Um, and very few trade-offs, honestly, versus, uh, versus like a, um, uh, a compact. So, uh, so, so, but there are definitely downsides in here. I, I, I think the thing that I really dislike the most, um, uh, besides uh, the things that I keep mentioning, like the seats, um, the, the gauges, and, and, um, and the chrome shrouds from the Pontiac Vibe, uh, Yeah, the thing that I like least about this car is that it's not, is that it's kind of confused about who it is. You know, it doesn't really have great market positioning because there is no retail branding for this car. So it's sort of like on its own. Um, so that's kind of a downside because, so let's say that you, like two of your girlfriends get in the car. They're like, oh my God, you got this new one. And they're like, yeah, it's the Captiva Spark, girl. Uh, um, I, was at, I was at a bar last night. It was Charlotte, uh, North Carolina girls rugby night those girls got wild first off they, they broke they got wild they were wild and i came back with a crazy wild twang but um so let's say two of five girls or two you so let's say you're driving your car you have four passengers two girls get in they're like oh my god this is a new car it's nice it's got leather it's got a moonroof it's got you know um like uh enter entertainment uh, i should before i say that okay so it's got a hard line for just a 3.5 millimeter audio jack 
It doesn't have a USB yet, but um, but it does have MyLink, uh, which which lets you do like a lot of voice control stuff. Yeah, you know, it's got Bluetooth, it's got OnStar, it's got a lot of stuff. So those girls are gonna be like, wow, you know, this, this is a pretty nice car. But you know, so but but one of the girls is gonna be like, what is a Captiva Sport? I've never even heard of this. You know, like what do they have cool ads or like how did you even find this car? And that sort of leads you down a road of like, well, you know, it's a it's typically a fleet car that um, blah blah blah. Um, and then the, let's say the third, the, the the fourth passenger is just a control. You know, she doesn't give a shit. She's, she's already passed out. She's uh, if she's on the if she's on the Charlotte, um, North Carolina rugby girls rugby team. Um, so, but the but so whatever. So it, it lacks sort of like retail positioning, and people will be confused when they see it because um, a lot of people like to see ads for the car that they're buying. It's kind of silly, but they like to know that other people know that it's a new car. I mean, like, people's motivations for actually pulling the trigger on a car purchase are very diverse. But, um, but, so, but the Captiva definitely comes up with, like, a, you know, negative points in that, in that regard. Uh, but it does, you know, but if I were, as someone who likes to drive a car fast and hard, no matter what kind of car it is, this car's pretty good. It's pretty good. The steering is great. The, um, the, it's got, you know, it has conventional, conventional controls for the automatic, which, um, which it would be a definite priority for me. Um, and um, and it feels confident on the road. It's got you know it's a car that you don't have to pay attention to drive to, which drive excuse me like a, to drive um, to drive period. You don't have to pay attention. Whereas with a lot of the electronic steering cars, if you're on like a, these crazy you know backwoods country roads like I am, which by the way there are crosses everywhere. There's a cross like every 50 feet up and down these roads because they have these well not not exactly right here, but on the roads we've been on because they have these huge angel oak trees that um. You know, they're like 10 feet wide and they're right in the road and it's and they just and nobody wants to cut them down but but nobody but but it's also really really dangerous like at night because these roads you know they're obviously not lit this is like a rural country road and um it just gets it's just dangerous i promise you i mean i can't even even like for an urban person like me who can like eat and you know do all this stuff while i'm driving <laughs> it's dangerous i can't even text i can't even check my email when i'm on these roads because i don't know them well enough and um every once in a while there's just a crazy curve that comes out of nowhere so crosses everywhere um and but with with really trustworthy um uh input settings like uh like this captiva sport does have uh it's 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 easier to drive those types of roads um because you aren't always second guessing what the electronics of the car are doing you're just sort of focused on you know, let's say your top three tasks, which for me include like, you know, driving on this road, talking to you guys, trying to talk about the Captiva Sport, and um, I don't know what my third task is, but uh, but those are my tasks. So I need to focus on those things, and um, I don't really need to concentrate on the, the electronic steering. Where whereas with like, if you have like electronic throttle, electronic steering, and um, a, a CVT, you're constantly like, well, what does the car think it's going to be doing? What is you know, what is it? Um, you know, what is, uh, what are its various settings? So that's irritating. That's too many variables. You know, you can't, you can't do, uh, you can't, you can't do it all. So, um, so that's good. So I would definitely, I would recommend this Captiva Sport because, um, I think it has really good handling. It has these great inputs and, um, it has that high speed stability, which, um, comes, you know, standard for all cars developed in Europe. I mean, it's just how it goes. I mean, they basically are able to, you know, even on the autobahns, like everybody would tell you, like, oh, you know, like, like you can drive as fast as you can. It's not really. I mean, you, of course you can, like on certain times of day, like on any highway. Um, but um, but that's not really the case. I mean, generally you're cruising at like a, every, the cruising pace, like whereas here it's like 80 miles an hour. You know, is like a regular cruising pace nationwide interstate highways. Um, you know, in, in France that's going to be like 85 or maybe 90. Um, and in Germany, like on a good day, that's going to be like 120. You're just going 120 and you're, you're focused and you're obviously paying attention. Uh, but it's not exponentially more difficult than cruising at 80 miles an hour. Um, uh, but, but it's, but it is a lot more demanding on the vehicles. I should say it's, you know, it, it, there are a lot of cars at that speed that are not meant that haven't really been tested at those speeds. Um, and I hate to call out Japanese automakers because it's really everybody except the, the Germans. Um, you know, my only example is like, you know, the fastest I'd ever driven when I was like a teenager with these crazy roads in Michigan in my Infiniti GT.